Welcome back to our YouTube Sabbath School class coming to you from the Tridelphia Church in Clarksville, Maryland. I trust you've enjoyed our brief mission spotlight from Romania. Stories like these and many more are made possible because of the mission outreach of the church. And that's what we're studying about this quarter in our Sabbath School lesson. My name is Pratap Gopala Rao. That's my full name. It's a, I know it's a mouthful. I come from the country of India. I serve here at Tridelphia Church as one of the elders. My day job is as a chemist working in a, in a, in a laboratory. And with me here is Dr. Michael Sukupo. He comes from the beautiful country of South Africa. And uh, he's also an elder at the Tridelphia Church. And his day job is assistant, associate director at the Ellen White Estate at the General Conference. And together, Michael and I are going to try to deal with this lesson, a very exciting lesson. It's the sixth lesson in our series of lessons, Making Friends for God, the joy of sharing his mission. I mean, I just couldn't miss this fact here. We are making friends for God mm. and the joy of sharing in his mission. It's all about him. Yes. It's not about us. And then I look at the title of our lesson today. It says, Unlimited Possibilities. Michael, do these words, these two words jump out at you? What do they mean to you in the context of our lesson for today? Unlimited possibilities. I think it's beyond um, our human scope. Okay. As I think of those words and thinking about our day-to-day -day life, uh, we are limited in all kinds of ways. But when we think of unlimited possibilities, it definitely does include God. Without Him, we do not have any reality with unlimited possibilities. But with God in it, uh, through the Holy Spirit, uh, and as we look at our lesson, it seems to be plugging us in into this source of power where God uh, does things through us. And as we look at stories of people in the Bible, real people who have had this connection and great things that God has done through them. Okay. You, you made the point that it's a task beyond us humans. Mm. See, you and I can barely control our little environment, our little circle, our own families. But the Gospel Commission is a commission to go to the, to the ends of the world. Mm -hmm. It's unlimited in scope. Mm. And, but the possibilities are there mm -hmm. to complete this task because mm. God has promised us His power. Mm. And as I said before, it's His mission. We are his ambassadors, his representatives, mm -hmm. and if we are plugged into him, the source of power, if you serve as channels of his grace, then God can use us mm -hmm. in any number of ways. And so, although from a human perspective, this is an, a daunting challenge, challenge, and we say we can do it, mm -hmm. but since it is God's task, it is his, his uh, mission, mm -hmm. and he chooses us, he doesn't leave us with our tools. Mm -hmm. And so what God does, he says, I'm sending you out in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm going with you and I'm going to be your enablement. I'm mm -hmm. going to give you the, the tools that you need in order to carry out the task that I've given you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we in the Christian world refer to these tools that God has given us to carry out his mission as spiritual gifts. You know, um, sometimes <clears throat> we are given tools uh -huh. and all kinds of tools, but we can't use them. So I think it is just beyond the tools. There's also an empowerment to be able to use those tools. Um, so uh, the Holy Spirit gives us, um, you know, not only the tools, but also how to use how these to tools. Use the tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I want to go to the memory text okay. for today. And uh, Michael, would you? Kindly read that to us. First Corinthians chapter 11, chapter 12 and verse 11. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. It's a very, it's a very packed sentence. There's a oh, lot, okay. of, lot of information in this one text. Mm. But it, it, uh, it kind of summarizes what we're going to talk about today. Right. And I was looking for a definition mm -hmm. of spiritual gifts. Mm. And uh, I found one by C. Peter Wagner. Mm. Peter Wagner, uh, 
I'm not sure whether he's still living, but he was for many years a professor at the Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena mm -hmm. and uh, an expert in church growth and has written over 50 books. And in his book on spiritual gifts, he gives us this definition of spiritual gifts. He said, a spiritual gift is a special attribute, mm. not the ordinary. It's different from our natural gifts that we all have. Mm. Spiritual gift is a natural attribute given by the Holy Spirit. That's the second thing. Mm. It's special, given by the Holy Spirit to every member of the body mm. of Christ, according to God's grace, to be used within the context of the body. Mm. So many different aspects to it. Mm -hmm. It is a special <clears throat> attribute. It's different from our natural gifts and talents that we have. Uh, how do you understand that, Michael? It's a special attribute. Very interesting. Um, as we look at the way these gifts are introduced in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, mm -hmm. um, Paul says here, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Now, if you look carefully at that word gifts in uh, the New King James Version, you will discover that it's italized. And the reason why this word is italized, it is because it is an, an, a supplied word. Not so in other words, in the Greek, it's not there. It's not there. So for it to make sense, for the sentence to make sense, uh -huh. they had to look at the context yes. and then supply that word gifts. Now, one biblical scholar looked at this and um, had a different suggestion, which I think for me, it does not really um, take away the gifts, but it also adds a, a dimension that is very interesting. And his idea was uh, concerning the spiritual persons. So in other words, the attributes we're talking about are attributes that are with people. And these gifts are given to people and God works through them. So um, that I found very interesting that God uh, has given every individual, not just special people, mm -hmm. some individuals, okay. but everyone has been given uh, a gift okay. or more. Okay. <laughs> You know, I was looking at the headings for each day of the week for our lesson right. study. And one of the headings is God, the giver of all gifts. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that it is not the first for the week. Yeah. When you look at it, it's, uh, it comes on uh, Monday's lesson. Yes. But I thought we would put it to us first. Okay. Because as we look at this text, it says it's a special attribute given by the Holy Spirit. Mm. So what this text is saying is the spiritual gifts that we have originate with God. Yes. They're not from us. They don't come from within us. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're not innate qualities that we have. They come from outside of us. And the three main passages in the Bible that speak about spiritual gifts mm -hmm. are first Corinthians chapter 12, Ephesians chapter seven. And then we also have Romans 12. And then we have James 1, 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. And each of these speak of God as being the originator are the one, or shall I use the word, the instigator, are the one who, who starts it going. Mm -hmm. It starts from him. It does not originate mm -hmm. from us. And so there's nothing that we can take uh, credit for mm -hmm. because it's not ours. Mm -hmm. It is from him. Mm -hmm. And so w would you just uh, take a look again at this uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. Mm -hmm. But one and the same spirit works in all these distributing to each individually as he wills. You mm -hmm. see the active agent here mm -hmm. is God. Mm -hmm. It comes from him. Mm -hmm. But there is another part to this uh, to these, uh, verse. They are apportioned mm -hmm. or divided or distributed to every individual. Mm -hmm. Nobody is left out. Mm -hmm. Witnessing, our quarterly says, is not a special gift that is given to a select few. Witnessing is the calling of each and every Christian. To be a Christian is to be a witness. Someone has said to be a Christian is to be a witness or to be preparing to be one. And if you're not a witness and preparing to be one, then you cannot call yourself a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so witnessing is given this gift of witnessing or all the other spiritual gifts are given by God mm -hmm. to every member of the church. And why is that important that God give it to everybody? I think it uh, comes back to 
the, the mission that God has given, okay. not only to one individual or special people, but to the entire body okay. of the church. And that imagery of the body actually gives us the idea of why, because every member of the body has a function. And that function um, edifies the body. That function has a contribution to the body. And so as we look at that image of the body, everyone is given a gift for a special service that they have to render to the body. Now I was thinking about what part of the body really does not have any function that is, you know, I, I, I thought about that. And I remembered that my son some uh, a time ago had his appendix removed. Uh -huh. Now, we asked this question as we were studying this yeah. uh, lesson at home. Um, is, this a fun is, is this part of the body uh, f uh, serving a very important, uh, an important function? We discovered it does. There is a function, no matter how small, yeah. and that is the point. No matter how small the function is, but there is a function for every part of the body. And when we do not know the function, we call them vestigial structures. Right. And we say, oh, and we try to use an evolutionary term that at some point in the past, mm -hmm. it had a function. Mm -hmm. But as Bible believers, we don't believe in evolution. No. We know there are functions and we do not understand everything. Mm -hmm. There are so mm -hmm. many mysteries in the body that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. But as you pointed out, even the appendix that seems not to have a function mm -hmm. does have a function that we don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. And so every part of the body has a function, mm -hmm. whether big or small. In the, in, the, in the economy of God, there is no hierarchy of gifts. Yes. We tend to think, we humans tend to put one gift above the other. But the body doesn't do that. The body doesn't say to the one part, doesn't say to the other, I can do without you. Mm -hmm. And you know, they don't get too far without that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the, the rest of the body says to the eye, you're so small, why are you trying to boss us around? And the eye shuts off, what's going to happen to us? We're going to fall in a ditch. And so we need all of it. So the Bible tells us in our lesson that God gives everyone gifts. Mm -hmm. But the other side is also God does not give every gift to one person. Right. That's also important. Mm -hmm. And why is that be important if God gave all the gifts to one person? Well, um, I think in that case, um, as Paul says in following this imagery, um, if it is an eye and all the gifts are given to the eye, then the eye uh, would think that nobody else can do anything else, but every, everything has to be the eye. And the eye can can do it herself or herself. Or right, yeah. right. So um, I think it is important that these gifts are distributed as, as, the, as the text says, that it is the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit works in all things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. This is 1 Corinthians 12, um, 11. Uh -huh. So um, the Holy Spirit decides which gifts He gives to who? Uh -huh. So um, another big question that comes to my mind that we probably need to look at is what about talents? Are those acquired um, naturally? And can God use talents as well uh, to uh, carry out his mission? I remember pastoring a church in South Africa and I watched with uh, concern um, how people that I thought, you know, had certain talents and skills and would fit in a, sp a specific area, the church decided otherwise. They uh, chose um, people that are teachers uh -huh. to do something else. Yeah. And that to me indicated that uh, the Holy Spirit gives to whoever he wants to give the gifts for that time to carry out the mission. Um, because I'm a teacher, I, I don't necessarily um, have to be only doing teaching in the church. There are other areas I could be doing um, as empowered uh -huh. by the Holy Spirit. So it is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that makes a huge difference on the um, mission of the church. But is there a place for discernment? Can I look at myself and honestly say, there are certain things that are not things that I can do. They're mm -hmm. not my natural talents. I can, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 
for instance, I hear of people going to all over the world to to play places that the gospel has never gone before, mm -hmm. to these savage tribes and these primitive places. They don't have a language, or even if they did have a language, uh, the missionaries don't know the language. So they spend a whole lot of time learning the language. And I said, if it was left to me, mm. I would never get to go past base one because mm. I, I'm not good with languages. Mm. I can't learn languages. And so is there, a, there is room for discernment here to say, okay, there are certain things I'm good at, mm -hmm. certain things I need to leave to other people to do. Mm -hmm. I know that, especially in the, in, the, in the third world, in the mission field, not so much here in the United States, but you do see it sometimes. You take a person who's an outstanding preacher, mm -hmm. wonderful preacher and evangelist, and they say he would make a good conference president. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. They bring that person in to do administrative work, and it turns out to be a failure. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that a danger that we can fall into, and we do fall mm -hmm. into? Mm -hmm. I think discernment is also, to my way of looking at it, um, a gift mm -hmm. in, on its own. Mm -hmm. um, but I think everyone is able uh, to receive that uh, indication as you open yourself for being used by the Spirit of God in His service, you discover. Okay. Uh, things that you perhaps uh, were not sure about or thought you had limitations on, uh -huh. this is now where the idea of unlimited possibility comes in, okay. where you know your limitations, you know um, you can't do certain things, or you don't like doing certain uh -huh. things yeah. as well. But then the, uh, the Holy Spirit impresses upon you, uh, and the church says, we would like you to do something and you know, um, you know, you don't like doing that or you don't, uh, it's not your talent, uh, but the Holy Spirit empowers you to be able to do even things yes. that you thought you were limited on. But the opportunity comes mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit makes it clear to you that this is a task that you, you, you need to do and he empowers you to be able to do it. I can use a, a good example from my own experience. I came mm. to this church about two years ago when the nominating committee met. Mm -hmm. They asked me if I would head the ACS, Adventist Community Services Committee. I said, no, I've never done anything like that before. And uh, someone said, I, I, I can help you. Mm -hmm. Anita, who was mm -hmm. a previous uh, uh, director of the committee, mm -hmm. she said, I'll serve on the committee and help you along. Mm -hmm. But it's something you will, I'm sure you'll enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm into my second year in that, and I'm really mm -hmm. enjoying it. I've been exposed to so many different kinds of people mm -hmm. and uh, avenues of service that I would never have been, uh, been open to mm. if I had said, no, that's something, I've never done that before, mm. and so this is the way we've always done it. And there's mm. one of the uh, things that we always use. It can be done because this is the way we've always done mm. it. Mm -hmm. And we've heard that a lot of times in communities. We've done it this way, we're not open to new, uh, a, a paradigm shift in the way we do things. Mm. But when the Spirit opens our eyes to a need, mm. the Spirit not only calls us, but enables us to mm. do that. Mm. And uh, there are also times when the Spirit will shut a door because they said, this is not, the, this is not what you're for. Mm -hmm. You can better serve in another capacity. Mm -hmm. You know, God, we have this expression in the English language, God does not put all his eggs. No, we don't put mm -hmm. all our eggs into one basket. Mm -hmm. And I think God doesn't do that either. Mm -hmm. God doesn't put, pour all his talents into one person. Mm -hmm. The classic example is from the life of Moses. You remember Moses, when God called him mm -hmm. to go and deliver the children of Israel from Egypt, he says, I am slow of speech. I can't speak. And you would expect God, who just a few minutes before took a, a, a staff and turned it into a snake, mm. and he did all these miracles, that miracle-working God could have moved his magic wand and made Moses into an eloquent speaker. Mm. Right? God could have done that. Yes. But what does God do? God says, you know, I don't put all my eggs in one basket. You are not self-sufficient. Nobody else is sufficient. We need each other. I'm going to send your brother Aaron. He will go ahead of you. He will be your mouthpiece. Mm. And so Aaron and Moses speak to go together. And so here is a good example of how God says, yes, you're good at this, but somebody else may be better at that. Mm -hmm. And together you can fulfill the mission that I've given you. Mm. And so I, I believe that that's a very important, but he gives us individual gifts, he gives everybody gifts, mm -hmm. but he doesn't give everybody all the gifts. Yeah. And when he does call you for a certain thing, even though you think you cannot do it, he will enable you mm -hmm. if that's what God wants you to do. Right. 
And it says here, the other part, here, but the, the next part it says, according to God's grace. Hmm. You know, a lot of people, and sometimes, you know, we feel, God called me because he saw something good in me. Mm -hmm. He saw my abilities, my vision, my this, that, my degrees and all that. So God called us. But here it says, when God gives us spiritual gifts, it's given by him, mm -hmm. it comes from him, mm -hmm. and it is according to his grace. And what do we understand mm -hmm. by according to his grace? I think his grace um, has uh, opened the way of salvation for us. Mm -hmm and also open the way um, of service. So I think it is both salvation and, and service, where he gives us freely um, these gifts that we would otherwise not have. Uh, possibilities are open that we would otherwise not even think we would be able to do such things. Okay. So we see this um, in the example in Acts where during Pentecost, um, the apostles were facing this huge task that Jesus had given them to take the gospel to the whole world. And right in front of their eyes was the whole world because it was the time of the feast and people from all over the world were there mm -hmm. talking different languages. And again, unlimited possibilities. We see them speaking in these different languages, gifted with a, a special gift of, of languages. And other people try to play this down because they were responsible for, uh, uh, you know, nailing Jesus to the cross. And they were saying, no, 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 these men are just drunk. And, uh, but people who were speaking these languages were saying, wait a minute, but they are speaking accurately. Things that we understand. Things that we know and yes. we understand. It's not gibberish. No, <laughs> it is a language that uh -huh. I can understand and interpret. So I think um, those are indications of God's grace when he can shower upon us gifts that we would otherwise not have and do th to do things that we would otherwise think are, are impossible. And he makes them a possibility. And we've heard, we've heard the expression, God does not call the qualified, uh -huh. but he qualifies the ones he calls. They're called. Mm. And we have numerous examples in scripture mm -hmm. of where God calls ordinary people, people, shepherds and, mm -hmm. and tax collectors and ordinary people with no background in, in the things of God. Mm -hmm. But he empowers them mm -hmm. and then he qualifies them to do the things. And so Zechariah, there's a beautiful text in Zechariah that we so often forget. Zechariah 4, 6, not by might, mm -hmm. nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's interesting that um, many of the prophets were called by God and they, you know, declined the call. Mm -hmm. And, um, but God, like Isaiah, for example, mm -hmm. uh, but God empowers him and he directs him and uh, there's a symbol of a coal that is placed on his tongue mm -hmm. uh, so that the weaknesses and the limitations that he senses or he feels are actually made up by God's power. So sometimes we may be feeling that um, we have limitations, we cannot do certain things, and there are people that probably do things better than we do. Mm -hmm. It is not about comparing myself yes. with what other people are doing, but what God can do through me at a given time. I also think that um, when we look at these gifts, uh, what we are saying that uh, God cannot give uh, gifts to one person, but at a uh, given time, God can give a person over time mm -hmm. gifts, gifts that, you know, uh, are gifts that he did not have before yes. um, and opens those possibilities over time. For example, this year, I may be um, uh, handling a position in the church that I did not have before and yes. something that I could not do. Yes. But God makes uh, it possible for me to be able to f um, uh, work in that ministry or that particular area. Yeah. In the next year, I'll be doing something else. And so we see how God opens up all these possibilities for witnessing. But I think witnessing also... Um, opens other possibilities where we are able to 
uh, talk to our friends, our neighbors, people that are closer to us and witness to them of the grace of God and His power in our lives. And yeah, I think of the example of uh, the prophet Amos. Mm -hmm. He goes and takes a message of judgment to the northern kingdom. Right. And the people throw him out. They didn't want to hear that. And Amos says, you know, don't get angry with me. This is not my idea. I was just minding my business, taking care of my cattle. Mm -hmm. And God plucked me like a lion would pluck a kid and gave me this message. So I'm bringing a message straight from God. Mm -hmm. It's not from me. Mm -hmm. And so here is a person who had no background, no theological background, mm -hmm. nothing whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But God calls him and he takes this message to the northern kingdom. And that's the whole message of the book of, uh, book of Amos. Mm -hmm. And so, as I said, there are numerous other examples in the Bible where God chooses ordinary people and empowers them to do things that they never thought they could do. Mm. But the, this idea of uh, giving multiple gifts to people, yes, God does give people mm. multiple gifts. There are a lot of very, very talented people, and over mm. a period of time, they may move from one task to another. Mm. But God doesn't go so far as to give these gifts all to a few people to the exclusion of others. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so if God gives all the gifts to the pastor, mm -hmm. the pastor would be run, uh, would be, uh, would run ragged, you know, mm -hmm. going in every different direction trying to get the work done. Well, the rest of us don't have any gifts, any uh, assignment, no mandate to do anything because mm -hmm. the pastor is doing it all. What is interesting also is that um, some of the gifts given uh, by the Holy Spirit and listed here in, the, in, in these different uh, passages of Scripture, they, they relate to leadership and some relate to general gifts. So mm -hmm. it seems that there are people given gifts in order to empower others uh -huh. to be able to do the functions and the mission um, of, of the church. And so, um, you know, I, it was interesting to see these different levels where there are gifts that are relating to leadership and there are gifts that are given for mission. And therefore, those that are given the leadership gifts uh, are to empower um, the others. Okay. So there are all these uh, different categories of gifts. And so we all, like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, mm. we all fit together. If one piece is missing, the picture is not complete. Yeah. And sometimes, you, sometimes we think, you know, I'm just a little piece, you know, a dark, shady scary little piece of, of the puzzle makes mm -hmm. no difference you know, in, the, in the total picture. Mm -hmm. But have you ever tried to put a jigsaw puzzle together and uh, you're so excited about it and you come to the end of it and then suddenly you realize a couple of pieces are missing. Mm -hmm. And although you get an idea of the general picture, mm -hmm. something feels missing. It seems incomplete. Mm -hmm. And that's the, how the Church of God is too. Mm -hmm. If you leave out some pers somebody from the work of the church. Mm -hmm. It's incomplete because we're all members of the same body mm -hmm. and uh, we all have a part. God does not give us multi all of us gifts. Everyone is given a gift, a unique gift, so that we can hide our gifts under a bushel. Mm -hmm. He gives us unique gifts. Everybody gives so that everybody can use their gifts. Mm -hmm. But there are churches and, and it happens in almost every church I've been. There are churches where the gifts of a lot of people are not utilized, mm -hmm. and for a number of reasons. Some of people are very shy. Some people come to some of these churches because they want to be anonymous, just mm -hmm. fade into the furniture. But there are also people who want to be active in church. Mm -hmm. And I think it is incumbent upon the, it, the leadership of the church mm -hmm. to actively, proactively seek out people for ministry. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and unless we do that, uh, we're going to lose a lot of the wealth that we have in the church by way of talent mm -hmm. and abilities that a lot of people bring into the church. You know, I, I really appreciate how our church has given opportunities to our children and young people. Yes. Uh -huh. um, as they grow in the faith, they begin to, uh, you know, uh, identify what their gifts are. They're given an opportunity to stand up front and just read a text, mm -hmm. a scripture reading, yes. or they're given an opportunity to do something that seems small. But out of that, I have seen, um, you know, uh, young people that are emerging as uh -huh. preachers, that are emerging as teachers, that are emerging as, you know, uh, people that can do singing and all kinds of things. And so uh, it is through... Um, you know, willingness and openness to God's spirit and also being willing to give it a try. And so uh, that way uh, the Holy Spirit opens those possibilities, that door of possibilities 
for uh, even more gifts and more usefulness to come in. I would say, human limitation is no limitation for God. Yes. And uh, we have this uh, beautiful passage from Ministry of Healing, page 159, in our mm -hmm. Sabbath School Quarterly. Mm -hmm. And Ellen White says, there is no limit to the usefulness of one who, putting self aside, these are important, mm -hmm. makes room for the working of the Holy Spirit upon his heart and lives a life wholly consecrated to God. Mm. In other words, the power is God's. Yeah. But if we don't get out of the way and say, I want to be front and center, if we don't, God can do his, can do his work in us. Mm. And so he says, there is no limit un to the usefulness of one who putting self aside mm. allows the spirit to work with them. And E. Stanley Jones was a famous Methodist minister who, who went to India many years ago. He says, unless the spirit, Holy Spirit fills, the human spirit fails. Hmm. I think beautiful statement. Unless the Holy Spirit fills, the human spirit fails. Hmm. And I have in my own life seen people that we thought would not be able to accomplish anything hmm. that were used by the Spirit of God in, in marvelous ways. Just two weeks ago, uh, I was sharing some messages on, the, on our church website, Tridelpha Connect, about my cousin. Hmm. My cousin who's a teacher, and, and Michael, you went to Spicer some I've met recently. You. you met my cousin, yes. Charles Babu, who's a blind mm -hmm. man. Yes. He's a professor in the religion department. You met mm -hmm. him there. Mm -hmm. And he turned blind as a young boy. Mm -hmm. And his parents and all, they were so, they didn't know what to do, you know. He was the only son in the family, and the father was so discouraged. And he thought that was the end of his life and the, the end of his son's future. But the son was a positive man. He excelled in school, went to college, earned a master's degree and a doctor minister degree from Andrews University, teaches at Spicer College in the religion department. And his wife passed away two weeks ago. Hmm. And we're just praying for him that somehow God will continue to help him because as a blind man now, a few years from retirement, without his wife to guide him, he's, he's going to be lost. But he is strong in his faith in God. And as he spoke as a tribute to his wife, he says, I am a nobody, he says, absolutely nobody, blind, useless, as far as the world is concerned. But God picked me up and used me, he says. And he says, I don't say this boastfully. And I was put to shame when he, he mentioned this. He has conducted 258 revival meetings around the world. 11 major evangelistic series around the world, brought in hundreds of souls into the church. From a human perspective, he was an absolutely, what shall I say? No hope. A lost case. But he submitted himself to God. And God was able to take him mm. and do marvelous things for him. It's not our ability, someone mm. has said, but our mm. availability. All right. That is important to God. You know, I met um, a, a man who was uh, illiterate, not able to read. Mm -hmm. not able to write, but he was conducting Bible studies. Mm. So when he goes into the Bible studies, he knew all his verses by memory. And he would call a verse and ask the person he's uh, giving Bible studies to, to read that verse. And he knew the verse. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would go through the Bible study like that. And um, so there are no limits mm -hmm. to what God can do. Yeah. Another section of our lesson today was uh, the purpose of spiritual gifts. Mm. Can you think of some, uh, some of the purposes of the spiritual gifts that uh, our lesson brings out? I think in Ephesians 4, um, it's clear that these gifts are meant to edify the church. And so as we um, are given these gifts, um, we are not given gifts to use it for our own selfish means or mm -hmm. ways, but they are meant to develop the church. Okay. Uh, they are meant to edify the, the church. And therefore, um, you know, if, if that purpose is met, then we see great things happening within the church because we use them for the purpose that God has intended them for. When we read each of the passages, major passages on spiritual gifts, that we find in the Bible, Romans 12, 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, we notice something very important, that all of these spiritual gifts are given in the context of community. 
Right. They're given to individuals. Mm -hmm. Spiritual gifts are not given to a crowd. God doesn't look at the, the church and say, all the people on the left side of the church get mm -hmm. this gift. All the people on this side get this gift. Mm -hmm. No, he chooses individuals mm -hmm. and gives them the gifts. Mm -hmm. So gifts are given to individuals, but they're not given in isolation. Mm -hmm. They're given in community to be used for the edifying of the church. Mm -hmm. They're not given, they're given for service, not for self gratification. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. <clears throat> Because as you think of um, the, uh, the whole idea of unity in community, mm -hmm. then um, everything is working harmoniously in this uh, body community that is uh, you know, given um, a, a, a very important mission for the world. So if we were working with all the gifts that we have, but not working in harmony, everyone doing whatever they want to do, there's no <coughs> order, um, then our mission would be uh, frustrated. But there is also this element of unity mm -hmm. that brings all of us together so that unitedly we can work harmoniously um, as a body, as a community to achieve the mission that God has set for us. I think uh, for me that is a a very important element. And again, I noticed that with the list that we have in 1 Corinthians 12, in Romans 12, and Ephesians 4, we have not a uniform list. Mm -hmm. These are all different. Diverse. Yes. Diverse. So that indicates um, that the uh, gifts that are given by the Holy Spirit are very diverse. And I believe that this is not a complete list. So I cannot say, well, my gift is not listed in any of these lists, and uh -huh. therefore there's nothing I can yeah. do. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, there is no limit. These are just examples uh -huh. of what God has done in the past and what he can do. But there are many more uh, things that God can do through us as we open ourselves up to be used by the Holy Spirit. What about the gift of music? Is it specifically mentioned in these? No, this it is not no. mentioned. But I knew and your wife, uh, I've been blessed with this um, <laughs> talent of music and you have blessed our congregation. And I'm, I'm so blessed people everywhere you've been. Mm -hmm. And so, as you said, it's not an exclusive list. Mm -hmm. Anything mm -hmm. that we can use it for the glory of God. Not mm -hmm. every gift, mm -hmm. our lesson point, not every gift can be a spiritual gift. Not right. every talent. Right. Supposing I, I am a good baseball player, mm -hmm. I don't see how that can be translated into a spiritual gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I'm say I'm a good CEO mm -hmm. running a, a, a company, I can come and run a church effectively. Right. So I can, you can translate that if I, if I dedicate my, uh, my talents to God and he mm -hmm. can use that. Mm -hmm. And so there is some interchangeability there. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, not always. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you again said, these gifts are, are as a, a sampling mm -hmm. of the many things that God can use Mm -hmm. Diverse gifts. And uh, the world will say that when you have diversity, it's hard to bring unity. Mm. We have racial diversity, language, nationalities, backgrounds, education, all of this. How in the world do we come together? Mm. And if you look at the disciples of Christ, yeah. they were so different mm -hmm. in personality, character, backgrounds from which they came. But Jesus intentionally, I think, brought all these different people together. Mm -hmm. And for three and a half years, um, he was working with them so that they um, may be a good start for a united church. Mm -hmm. But was the church really united in all ways? They, they were striving for that. Yeah, in fact, was. in John 17, mm -hmm. Jesus you know, is praying for them uh -huh. that they may be one, they may be united. Um, but we see in Acts 15, troubles, yes. uh, you know, uh, conflicts were always there. But uh, the Holy Spirit is then the unifier. He brings, you know, people together through these gifts, but also uh, with one mission. And if the Holy Spirit has, is behind all of these gifts, then one gift is not more important than the other. Right. In the, in the economy of God, there are no superstars. Mm. There are no superstars. Neither are there people who we call a liability. Mm. You know, they may have different talents, maybe to a different extent, maybe not as powerful as a Mark Finley, mm. but they can preach a sermon mm. and God can use them. Mm. And so nobody is a liability in God's cause. 
Nobody is a superstar in God's cause. Mm -hmm. We all have our talents. I was in Bangalore, India uh, three years ago. I was at the airport and there were three lines for, for immigration. One for nationals, Indian national returning. One for people with foreign passports. Mm -hmm. And there was one. There was one that says for people who are differently abled. Mm. It's the first time I ever saw that. Normally you would see a line for handicapped mm. or disabled people. Mm. It says mm. differently abled. And I said, mm. what a beautiful insight. Very positive. Very way positive. To mm. These people may not be able to do some of the things that you and I do. Right. But they can do certain things. Mm. And uh, we have studied. Uh, studies have shown that when a person loses one of his senses, mm. somehow the other senses are magnified. Mm -hmm. And they can do a good job. Mm -hmm. And so it is for the church mm. to recognize that all are gifted. All are valued. I was a member of Sligo Church for 24 years, and the motto of the church was this, all are gifted, mm. all are valued. Mm. And it's a good slogan. We do mm. not always fulfill that mm -hmm. uh, in practice, but it's something we must always work towards. Mm. And as you said, unity is something we must work towards, mm. although unity is not always there, yeah. because we are humans, we are fighting like the disciples fought, mm. we still fight. The, 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 the good Jerusalem church in Acts chapter 15, they fought. Mm. Mm -hmm. Paul and Barnabas had differences over John mm -hmm. Mark. Mm -hmm. We have differences in our church. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we set our differences aside because we say, this is not my task. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's his task, his emblem, and he will unite us even where we are so different. Mm -hmm. And so I take, I take courage from that, that we have a God who, who brings us together in spite of our uniqueness mm -hmm. and our differences. Our spiritual gifts are not competitive gifts. Mm -hmm. They're complementary gifts. Yeah. They fill the gap for what one person cannot do, like Moses cannot speak, Aaron is there. Mm -hmm. When this person cannot do something else, somebody else is mm -hmm. there. And I'm, I'm so thankful that because of this coronavirus, mm -hmm. so many people in our church have suddenly showed up with gifts that we never thought they had. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for these gifts of some of the people here, the services, the Sabbath school today, would not be carried live. Mm -hmm. Our church service would not be carried live. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have a service in the woods. Mm -hmm. And you know, all of these talents that God has given us have come out in the open because sometimes, because of certain uh, tragic situations, mm -hmm. maybe sometimes because of uh, some experience we go through. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, God opens our eyes to different people with different gifts mm -hmm. that uh, can help to build the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are three minutes away. Uh, maybe you have a, a few, uh, maybe a, a concluding thought that you may want to yes, bring I, here. I think uh, there are people who are looking at this lesson and thinking, how do I then know um, what my gift is? I think um, it is uh, important for us to uh, take some time, pray over this um, question and allow the Holy Spirit uh, to help each of us discover what God would like us to do. And I think uh, taking a step when an opportunity opens up, mm -hmm. not to step back and say, no, but I can't do that, but to take a step forward and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you in what uh, you can do uh, as a witness. And I think the idea of witnessing is not about what we have and what we don't have. It's about who we are. We are witnesses. We are like a light. We are like the salt. And all of us have a responsibility that way. See, now, I think the closing part of our lesson referred to the talents, the parable of the talents. Mm. The master gives the one five talents, one two mm -hmm. talents, and one one talent. Mm -hmm. And he goes away and he says, you know, make use of this. The guy with five comes back with one, with five more, the mm -hmm. one with two comes back to, the one has one, buries his talent. Mm -hmm. What is the lesson there for us? Mm -hmm. Is it success or what is it? I don't think so. I believe that God is saying, be faithful with the talent I've given you. Mm -hmm. If this man with the one talent had gone and invested it mm -hmm. and lost it in the process, mm -hmm. he would still have heard, well done, good and faithful mm -hmm. servant. Mm -hmm. There are many people who trained for the ministry, trained for this, went down to the mission field, and within a few days, weeks or maybe months, were killed without mm -hmm. anything happening. Mm -hmm. they, there were no baptisms, nothing. But they were killed. Mm -hmm. Wasted talent? No. They were faithful. Mother mm -hmm. Teresa once says, God never called me to be successful. All he asks is that I be faithful. faithful. And that's 
what we are called to do. Mm. Faithful to the task that God has given us. Amen. And he will do the rest. Amen. Use us as channels of his grace. Mm. Thank you for joining us for our Sabbath school lesson today. And uh, I hope you were blessed by this. And mm. uh, continue to study your lessons. We have beautiful lessons coming up in the next few weeks. Making friends for God. The joy of sharing in his mission. It is his mission, his work. We are just channels of his grace. Amen.